dear students welcome to introduction to nanoscience and nanotechnology course lecture number 11 i am dr parvez ahmed uh, from today's lecture we will start uh, discussions on optical properties of the nanomaterials so uh, first we will have some discussion on surface plasmons that what are surface plasmons uh, how they affect the optical properties and then we will deal with the size of the nanomaterial uh, the size and shape of the nanomaterial that how it affect uh, the optical properties so let's start our lecture with the optical properties uh, the size depends on the optical properties of the uh, nanomaterial particularly the nanoparticle is the results of the two uh, distinct phenomena so what are those, those two distinct phenomena uh, at first uh, we have surface plasma and resonance for the metal I mean, it is responsible for the size dependence on the optical properties of the nanomaterials. And the second one is the increased energy level spacing uh, due to the combinement of localized, uh, sorry, delocalized energy states. Uh, I mean, the, the first one, uh, that is the, the surface plasmon resonance for the metal. Uh, I mean, uh, this is particularly of importance uh, while we are dealing with the metal nanoparticles. And the second one that is the increased uh, energy level spacing uh, due to the confinement of delocalized energy state. Uh, this is particularly prominent and uh, semiconductor. So these are the two uh, distinct phenomena which are basically responsible for the size dependence on the optical properties of the uh, nanomaterials. So uh, let us start from the surface plasmons. So for that, uh, we have to recall that, uh, I mean, you can also see it here in the figure. Uh, what we have to recall, we have to recall that matter can be modeled as an arrangement of positive ions surrounded by a sea of free electron. I mean, just like you can see it here. I mean, that, that is, I mean, we're trying to clarify the concept of surface plasma. And before clarifying that, first of all, we have to uh, uh, we have to clarify our concept from some of the example here. And for that, we recall that metal can be modeled as an arrangement of positive ion, just like you can see it here. And these positive ions they are surrounded by uh, a sea of free electron, and you can see it here uh, in this figure. So what actually happened? Uh, this sea of electrons behave like a fluid. I mean, you can see it here. They, they, they behave like a fluid and will, and will move under the influence of an electric field. So we have, uh, I mean, th this is the concept for, uh, I mean, for the uh, electric field uh, or for, uh, I mean, what, what we can say that. Uh, we are trying to clarify the concept for the surface plasmon. So for that, I mean, first we recall that metal can be modeled as arrangement of positive ion surrounded by a sea of free electron. So this is uh, uh, what we already defined. And the sea of these electron uh, behave like a fluid and will move under the influence of an electric field. I mean, just like you can see it here, the electron, they are a bit uh, misplaced from their original position because here you can see that the positive ion almost almost they are at the metal but here you can see that the positive ion that they have been a bit uh, uh, misplaced uh, so there they, they have uh, I mean the electron we have under the influence of the uh, electric field so surface plasmon uh, what actually we have uh, if you remember uh, so we have to deal with the uh, two kind of the material one is for the bulk material and one is for the nano material So at the electric field, I mean just like we mentioned here I mean at this slide we say that the electric field basically influence the behaviors of the electron C I mean once we apply the electric field so the electron C they start a bit of oscillations with respect to the positive ion so what we have uh, at the electric field, uh, I mean when we apply the electric field and if that electric field is oscillating like a photon, so then the sea of electrons will also too. I mean we say that we have the electrons 
and uh, we have the electron C and the metal and once we apply the field, the electric field, so the electrons, uh, we say that if the electric field is oscillating, uh, so the, the electrons are the C of the electron, it will also oscillate. So these oscillations, uh, I mean uh, the, the electron oscillations, they are quantized and resonate at a specific frequency. I mean here you can see, uh, I mean you can observe here for uh, the metal nanoparticle, that is the gold pair. And here this is, uh, I mean a metal, particular metal surface. So these oscillations are quantized and resonate at a specific frequency and such oscillations are called plasmon. I mean this is the more formal understanding of uh, the plasmon. So what is a, what are, what are plasmon? So you can understand that we normally, I mean, uh, visualize the metal as, uh, I mean, as the, as the, uh, the way we mentioned on the previous slide. So now, here we say that if we uh, apply the electric field, so you know that the electric field is oscillating. So uh, the, the, the C of the electrons also oscillate with the applied field. And these oscillations are quantized and resonate at a specific frequency. Uh, so such oscillations are called uh, plasmon. And here you can see it. Uh, I mean here this is the resonant uh, at a metal surface. Uh, here you can see that this is basically figure A. So in figure B, uh, you can see those oscillation. Uh, I mean, it's a resonance and metal nanoparticle. So uh, I mean, it's a good example for uh, metallic spare that is gold nano spare, and this is for uh, I mean, most probably for uh, the bulb. So uh, surface plasmon, I mean we, we have a formal definition for the surface plasmon uh, or uh, so what, what are surface plasmon? So plasmons are the current excitation of free electrons and a matter. I mean uh, this is this is a short and more formal definitions. I mean if someone asks what is surface plasmon, so, uh, I mean, you know from the explanation, or you can uh, give the explanation further, but before the explanation, you should have a formal definition, and this is the more formal definition for uh, the surface plasmon, that they are the current excitations of free electron and a metal. So, uh, the plasmon resonance frequency uh, that we uh, denote by a small f, uh, depends on the particle size, shape, and material type. I mean, these are the factor on which the uh, the plasmon resonance frequency depends on. I mean, first we have the particle size, shape, and then the type of the material. These are the th three factor on which the surface, uh, I mean, the plasmon resonance frequency depend on. And it is related to the plasmon energy uh, the energy in this particular case we denoted by E uh, according to the Planck relations uh, uh, I mean uh, this this energy is given by E is equal to uh, HF where H, uh, H is basically the Planck constant and F is the resonant uh, the resonance frequency so the people you people already aware of the importance of this equation that is basically the the Planck's energy relations uh, so um, I don't need to explain it further. So surface plasmons are confined to the surface of the materials. Uh, so uh, it basically results in the optical properties of the metal, uh, especially the uh, nanoparticles. Uh, uh, nanoparticles are dominated by the interaction of surface plasmon uh, with the uh, with the incidence proton. So let me repeat it again. The optical properties of metal nanoparticles or metal nanomaterials are dominated by the interaction of surface plasmon with the incident protons. I mean, uh, what it means? It means that when we have, uh, especially in uh, metallic nanoparticles or uh, in uh, metal nanomaterials, uh, when we have the interactions between the surface plasmon and the incident proton, so this basically affect the optical properties of that particular uh, nanomaterial. So the role of surface plasmon is very important uh, 
and uh, the recognition or and the understanding of the optical properties uh, of nanomaterials. So metal nanoparticle like gold and silver have plasma frequencies and the visible uh, range. So uh, what it mean or what happened? Uh, so when uh, white light uh, impinges on the metal nanoparticles, so the wavelength corresponding to the plasma frequency is observed. So what happened as a result, the spectral uh, locations, strength and number of plasma resonance for a given particles depends on the particle shapes and size. So here you can see that uh, we, have, we, have, we have plotted the optical properties. Uh, we have, pro pl I mean here you can see different colors. Uh, is, this is the same gold nanoparticles, uh, but you can see different color. So that is basically the results uh, of observ uh, observance with respect to uh, the wavelength of light. I mean here you can see that uh, once we change, I mean uh, the wavelength, so here you can see that, uh, I mean along with that the observance of the light uh, in the gold nanoparticle it also changes. So with that, uh, when it happened, so along with that the optical properties or the look of the nanoparticle, it also changes. Here you can see that. So these are these are basically the optical absorption spectrum of 20 and 18, uh, 18 nanometer gold nanoparticle embedded in the glass. I mean these are the uh, 80 and uh, 20 nanometers uh, gold nanoparticle which are embedded uh, in the glass. Uh, so the observance, uh, the, uh, their observance has been plotted against the wavelength. So here you can see that the wavelength, uh, I mean, it's, uh, varies between uh, 400 to 700 nanometer. And here you can see the observance in this particular range. So what actually we see here, uh, somewhere, uh, I mean, around uh, 525, uh, here we say that for one kind of uh, nanomaterial, we have the maximum observance. So here you can see also this that their particular change here and color uh, as well. Uh, this is for the 20 nanoparticles. I mean from 10 to, uh, 20 nanometer size particle. So here the observance is uh, maximum uh, at a wavelength uh, approximately around 525 nanometers. And for 80 nanometer here you can see that the observance is maximum and that is around I think 570 uh, around uh, 550 I think 5 560 around 560 nanometer and the observance is uh, again this is uh, around uh, 85 or something so for smaller nanoparticle the observance is a bit smaller as compared to the larger size uh, particle. So that's why we are saying that uh, the observance, uh, I mean, it depends upon the size of the particle. Uh, but here you can see that uh, it's not only depend on the particle size, but also on the wavelength of the light that has been used and also on the type of the material. This fact we already mentioned on the uh, previous slide. So here again, we have some graph that is uh, we're trying to explain that surface plasma depends on uh, shapes. Uh, that is, uh, we're trying to explain the shape dependence of the uh, absorption spectra. And here you can see that the amount of light uh, that is scattered and to the far field is described by the scattering cross sections that we denote by SCS. SCS means scattering cross sections which we have plotted here in this graph against uh, the wavelength. So what happened? The scattering cross section is plotted against the wavelength of light used to illuminate a particle uh, from uh, a specific angle. I mean we illuminate the particles on the nanoparticle from a, sca a specific angle. So, so we observe the, the scattering cross sections I mean, we just plotted here scattering cross sections. So here you can see that uh, we have the arrows. So these arrows they basically indicate, uh, I mean, uh, the angle at which we scatter light on the particular nanomaterials. I mean, the arrow they basically indicates the uh, the angle 
at which we shine or at which uh, we uh, illuminate the, the light or it basically indicate the illumination angle the illumination angle and the color of the arrow is basically correspond to the different plotted line i mean here uh, you can see that we have blue uh, green and uh, red uh, arrows so they're basically uh, i mean the plotted line here we have the blue one it's a green one and this is the red one the, the color represents the plotted line but the arrow directions i mean that represents what uh, the illumination angle and here you can see it more clearly uh, i mean we have a triangular shape so here again we have plot in different colors so these arrow uh, the color corresponds to the plotted lines and the the, the arrow had they basically specified the angle at which the light is being uh, i mean uh, eliminated at that particular uh, nanomaterials so here again you can see it with more details i mean uh, uh, the triangular shapes a nanoparticle produces plasmon uh, with altered uh, frequency uh, and magnitude i mean here you can see that i mean uh, we are interesting that uh, what kind of what shape of the particle what shape of the plasmon? I mean it depend more the optical properties and again here we have the scattering cross sections uh, that is being plotted against the violin so here you can see that uh, we have uh, nanoparticles that is particles uh, square uh, hexagonal and, and triangular so triangular shape nanoparticles just like you can see it here uh, in this figure or in this graph so here you can see that the triangular shape, uh, which is in uh, green, so that produces a uh, plasmon with altered uh, or altered frequency and uh, magnitude. I mean, here you can see that uh, the altered uh, frequency is more. Scattering cross sections uh, is more. The, 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 we have the altered frequency uh, as compared to the uh, other shape. That is. Uh, spherical uh, square or an hexagonal so that's all we have for this lecture i hope you enjoy a lot um, so stay tuned uh, with the next lecture because in the next lecture we will continue uh, with the optical properties of the nanomaterial but uh, in that lectures we will have discussions on the energy levels energy level spacing and energy level spacing and quantum confinement so stay tuned for the next lecture thanks for watching again see you in that lecture very soon till then bye bye